Right now, I'd like to take a little bit of time considering why it is that Sam Phillips of Sun Records would have sold Elvis's contract the way he did to RCA. You would think, I would, I would think, not knowing if, if, I, if I didn't know how the, the business worked, that you know, if you have a singer like Elvis Presley and he's just starting to rise in the charts and starting to become a big star, why would you want to sell that person's contract to another label when maybe if he became a star you could make all that money and grow your own company, right? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of ironic that the way things work for the independent label actually, is at, at that time, actually punished too great of a success. And here's why. If you have a record that really starts to take off, you have to um, pay, in order to make as many copies as you want to be able to sell, you have to pay to have all those records pressed and all the sleeves printed and all of it assembled and shipped out. You have to pay all that money up front. The record store people or whoever else, the jukebox people or whatever, they're not going to pay you for those records until sometimes months later. So if you're a small independent label and you've only got so much capital to work with, and you put out all this capital to get these records out there, those records could be selling like hotcakes, but it doesn't do you any good because you're not going to see that money, maybe, for six weeks, eight weeks. In the meantime, you're really kind of frozen out. I mean, there's, unless you've got tons and tons of money at your disposal, which is not the definition of an independent label, right? You're kind of, you're kind of frozen out, and it's, it's, it, it can actually ruin, a, a big record like that could, could, back in those days, ruin an independent label because of the time lag between the money that they put out there. So it's ironic that they would be going under just at about the time they were having their biggest possible success. By the time the money comes into them, it's too late. Uh, they, they haven't had enough money to sustain the business during that period. And so what uh, Sam Phillips decided to do in the case of Elvis is Elvis's contract was coming up for renewal anyway, and there's no guarantee that Elvis would have re-signed it. And this is a little bit like talking about athletics these days, or sport, professional sports. So while Elvis's contract was still worth something, he sold it to RCA, but he wasn't even sure he wanted to sell it at that point. The way he tells the story, he says that he offered them, he made an offer to them when he offered $35,000. He thought they would never take it in a million years. It was like a way of telling them to go away citing the price so high that they just wouldn't take it. But to his surprise, they took it. And when the, when the money was actually, there was actually that much money in the deal, he had to think, well, should I grab this, you know, a bird in the hand versus two in the bush? Should I grab this now, take this money, and use it to reinvest in the company and other artists? He had other people coming along at Sun Records, we'll talk about in the next lecture, people like Johnny Cash and Roy Orbison and Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins. Maybe he thought he would take that money and he would reinvest it in his business and he would grow the entire thing even if he lost Elvis. Um, and so that's one reason, uh, or at least a couple of reasons, why Sam Phillips would have sold Elvis's contract as he did.